Hey, what's up, YouTube? This is Dan the Fix It Man. Got another quick video here for you. I'm going to show you how to change your rear brake pads on a 2015 Dodge Ram. This is the Crew Cab 1500. Now, the first thing I like to do is push the caliper piston back inside the caliper to make room for the new pads. And there's several ways to do that. The way that I found that's pretty fast is just grab a flathead screwdriver and put it in through this little opening and pry that towards you. Now before we do that, it's a good idea to pop the hood and take a look at the master cylinder. Here's a master cylinder reservoir right here where you can see the fluid line is, is well below the max line. So we've got enough room to push the caliper piston back in, which is gonna push the fluid backwards up into this cylinder. Now some people will open this bleeder screw and push the old fluid out of the system rather than backwards through the system. And that's fine as well. The way that we're going to do it, we're not opening the system and so it will not be necessary to bleed the brakes. So since we've got enough room up there, we'll go ahead and put a screwdriver in here and pull this towards you. You can hear that noise, it's just kind of creaking. Just some steady pressure until that bottoms out. Sometimes this method doesn't work well enough or it doesn't push the caliper piston in far enough. Feels like that's about as far as we can go because the caliper is now starting to butt up against this caliper bracket. So what we'll probably have to do is once we get the caliper off, we'll probably have to use this caliper compression tool to press the caliper piston the rest of the way in. Sometimes the screwdriver method works well enough and you can push it all the way out and sometimes you need to use this or a C-clamp or channel locks or vice grips, whatever you've got to press that caliper piston back in. Now we can loosen and remove these two slide pin bolts. 10 millimeter socket is what I'm using here with this long handle flex head wrench. You might want to keep one hand on here because of these abutment clips or springs, they're pushing the caliper outward. Also, you'll notice that this one rotates this direction and it's got a little notch down here in the bottom. That's opposite on the other side. Pull these calipers off. You don't want to just let it drop by the brake line. It's going to hang it up here on the coil spring. Just this little rope with some hooks in it just to keep that out of the way. And then we can pull out the old pads. Sometimes you need a screwdriver to pry them out. Pull off these clips here. The new pads come with new clips. Just a quick note on these clips. You can see that this little part right here, this spring is off-centered. It lines up with the rotor. So when you put the new ones in, just keep that in mind. Now, before I put the new clips on here, I'm just gonna clean this up a little bit with this old wire brush. The important thing is that those clips sit flush in there. And then the clips, again, these are kind of off-centered, this little spring part right here. So just make sure that that lines up with the rotor and those just snap into place. I've noticed a lot of people in some areas where they have a lot of rust, they'll actually put a little bit of uh, grease underneath here. It seems like it helps prevent some rust from building up in there. I don't really have a rust problem here, so I don't usually put anything underneath. Just make sure that those are seated fully. If you do put a little bit of grease under there, don't use very much. Now here's our new pad, and what I'm gonna do is grab a little bit of this sill glide and just put a little bit, just a little bit of this grease on the back of this shim and just kind of thin that out. You can also put it on the the part of the caliper that makes contact with the pads. You can also put it right here on the face of the caliper. I also like to put just a little bit at the ends here. And sometimes I'll just put a little dab of, of that uh, seal glide on these clips where the, where the brake pad slides in and out. It doesn't move a whole lot, but it just prevents it from binding up there or getting locked in place. So now we can put our brake pads in and just kind of line them up, make sure that those clips are flush, and then fit the pad underneath. See this little, this part of the clip, sometimes you gotta lift that up, fit the pad, this little ear of the pad in there as well. Same thing with the inside pad here, just a little bit, a little bit of that grease where the, uh, where the piston will be pressing on this. Now this has a rubberized shim on the back, which is nice, and that does help cut down on the vibrations, but I found still that this Silglide it really does help keep the noise down. Keeps the, prevents the vibrations from kind of transferring through every, everywhere. And again, a little bit on these little clips right here. Just the parts that are going to move. Just make sure you're very careful to not get any of this grease on the surface of the braking material or the brake pad face or on the rotor. 
And then we can put this one in here too. I already did the other side and this one was kind of a pain. You almost have to just kind of start it here at an angle. There we go. Ah, that just kind of wanted to hang up here on this clip. So just kind of keep that in mind. This, this inside pad is a little bit more challenging to line it up and get it started there, but that looks good. Okay, now we can grab the caliper here. What I'm gonna do before we try to put this on is I'm gonna pump out these slide pins here. You see, you just kind of push on them. Let's just pop them out this way. You can you can go either direction. And we're just gonna put, we're gonna clean these off and then add a little bit of grease or that same sill glide on the, these slide pins. Just push them out through those boots like that. They've got these little edges that will grab the boot on either side. We'll set this back up here for a second. We'll just wipe those off. These really weren't that dirty, but you can see a little bit of dried white grease on there. And just a little bit of this same this stuff right here, the Sil Glide. And just kind of spread that around on each one of these. And then we'll just press them back in. Press it all the way through. And then over here on the other side, just pull this rubber boot back until it catches that edge. There we go. That feels a little bit better, a little smoother. Same with this one here. And that's good to go. Now I also wanted to show you if, if uh, the screwdriver method doesn't work, it looks like this can go in a little bit farther so that we can uh, fit that over our brake pads. Grab an old brake pad and sit it right in there. Just get it positioned in there. You could use a C-clamp right here or vice grips or channel locks sometimes will work just fine. And then we'll just turn this in, press that caliper piston. Just needs to go in a little bit more. Usually that screwdriver method works on most vehicles. We were close, but it didn't quite push it in all the way. All right, and then we can just bring this caliper down. Remember this part right here has to go behind that part of the clip. And because of these springs here, you may have to push this down in order to get it to seat. Also, the slide pins right here, you may have to pull those out a little bit in order to get the caliper all the way on. Then we can get these bolts started right here. Again, you might have to wiggle or push on that caliper a little bit to get those lined up. And then the torque spec on these is 22 foot-pounds. And you're done. Now before you head out, you need to step on the brake pedal a few times until it feels firm. And what that'll do is push the caliper piston back out, pressing the pads up against the rotor where they need to be. When you do that though, don't press the brake pedal all the way to the floor. That can damage the master cylinder. Go ahead and double check the brake fluid in your master cylinder and make sure that that level is correct as well. And double check your manual on the torque specs on this. 22 foot pounds is what I found online for those slide pin bolts. I hope you liked the video. Please give it a thumbs up and subscribe if you don't mind. That does help me out. I'll put a link in the description to the parts and tools used in the video as well. Thanks so much for watching and good luck.